In this video, I'm walking you through how to do static ankle abductions. And I have to say, this is one of my absolute favorite exercises. That doesn't mean that you'll like it, um, but this is just an exercise that really, really, really suits my posture and I can just feel things kind of clunking into place in a positive way as I do it. You're going to need a yoga strap for static ankle abductions and you're going to need to have threaded it into a sort of loop like this. And we're going to be coming to our hands and knees into a static extension position, but we're going to have the strap around our lower legs a bit like this. And when we squeeze out with the lower legs, they're not going, sorry, they're not allowing the knees to go wider than hip width apart or narrower than hip width apart. So if I have the strap like, ah, these straps are too good, they're very grippy. Um, which is a good thing when you've got a yoga strap, but they're quite hard to move in and out. So say this is obviously hugely exaggerated, but say I had the strap like this, you can very clearly see that my knees are wider than hip width apart. So I need to have it so that when I squeeze out against the strap, my knees stay tracking in a hip width apart position, which is narrower than most people think. It's about two fists at a maximum. We're coming to our static extension position. And if you don't know what static extension position is, then please watch my video on static extension position and make sure that you master that before you add other layers on. So we are layering another exercise on top of static extension position. And if you don't understand static extension position beforehand, you won't do this well. So make sure that you understand how things should be feeling in the base position before you start making it more difficult for yourself by adding other bits and pieces on top. I will quickly run you through it, but there are more cues for static extension position, so please do watch my video on that. We're coming to all fours, like so, and we're starting off with our wrists directly underneath our shoulders, our knees directly underneath our hips, we're keeping the tops of our feet and our shins on the floor. We're not in this position like that. The fingers are super wide and spread. We walk the hands one handprint further forwards. We shift the weight so that the shoulders are over the wrists. Fingers are spreading wide and we are sinking down into our shoulder blades. So I'm drawing my chest towards the floor. Drawing my chest towards the floor is not the same as leaning my pelvis forward. So can you see there how my shoulders are further forwards than my wrists, that's not correct. So the chest moves down, the shoulder blades move behind, the head completely relaxes and the pelvis tilts forwards and my shoulders stay over the wrists. One of the things I have to be wary of is that my shoulders want to come up by my ears and I have to keep reminding to pull them down away from the ears as well as staying down in at the uh, shoulder blades themselves behind. This is static extension position. Pointing your toes into plantar flexion. So we're not doing this. We are plantar flexing our feet. That might give you a cramp if you're like kind of weak in your feet. So that's a good thing we like cramp. You may also get a cramp in your hip as well. And uh, that's also a good thing in this exercise. So keeping the toes firmly pointed, remembering all the various cues for static extension position. Again, watch the video if you haven't already. Head stays relaxed. This is a difficult exercise, but we must keep control of our breathing. So we are still doing our deep nasal diaphragmatic breathing throughout the exercise. We are going to squeeze out with the strap around our uh, lower legs, hold and release. Squeeze out, hold, release. So my calves are moving outwards. My pelvis is still staying tilted forward. So as I do the squeezing out, I'm not then like rocking my pelvis backwards or moving my body forwards and backwards. My, bo my body stays completely still except, except for my lower legs. So the lower legs are simply moving out and I've got pointed toes and I'm keeping that pelvis tilted forwards towards the ground and if you're feeling things properly, you should be hopefully getting a bit of a cramp or at least work going on in the lateral hip stabilizers. So this is why I love this exercise so much because these muscles are quite weak in my body and when they switch on in this exercise, I get a cramp and I just feel amazing afterwards. I love how my shoulders feel, so I love this one. So we're gonna walk you through 15 of these and you're moving your hips actually into uh, adduction, but also some um, sort of internal rotation as well. So off we go, head stays relaxed, 
pointing toes, keeping them on tops of the feet and the shins on the floor. Pelvis really drives down and squeezing out with lower legs, hopefully getting cramp in the side of our hips, pulling shoulders away from ears. 15 reps for the sake of the video, off we go. One. Tops of the feet stay on the floor, by the way. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Oh, I love that one. Doing this video has reminded me that I need to bring that one into my daily routine again because I might miss that one a bit. So that's static ankle abductions. 